everybody, it's Amy from Winterwood Studio and welcome to today's video, which are the 14 essential supplies that you need if you're serious about learning how to draw. Now, it's actually like a base kit and then add-ons. So like the base kit, there's six essential items and you absolutely have to have those if you want to really seriously learn how to draw. Um, and then the other stuff is like maybe the next level. So grab yourself something cozy to drink, come on in and let's talk about art supplies. Okay, so for this video, I think it might be easier to move you from here to here so I can show you overhead all the different things that I think are really essential to learning to draw. So let's do it. Okay, so we're over at my work desk here and we're going to talk about the essential supplies you need to have if you really are going to get serious about learning to draw. And the first thing I recommend is a sketchbook. This is my favorite sketchbook for dry media, so drawing. Um, it is the Moleskine Art Collection. Uh, this is an older one. I'm sure you've seen it on my videos if you've been watching the channel for a while. Um, but the pages are super thick. It will even handle like a light well, it'll handle more than a light wash of, of wet media, like this is a gouache painting, um, and it handle, you can see, like there's some mild rippling, uh, but nothing too serious. But the tooth for this is perfect for um, colored pencil, pencil, uh, graphite pencil, blending graphite pencil, ink, pen and ink any of those things, um, fine liners. So if you're really serious about learning to draw, I suggest getting a nice sketchbook with good thick paper um, and practicing in it. And I know this is hard, it's hard for me, but uh, even if you spend a decent amount of money on your sketchbook, don't be afraid to use it because one of the best things you can do to get better at drawing is to practice. Um, I actually have a video, I don't remember what it was called, like maybe six ways to actually get better at drawing. I'll link that down below so you can check that out too um, to get some ideas on how to practice. I don't know if I titled that video really good, but really it's a video about how to practice drawing to get better at it. So I will link that down below and you should check that out after this one, but watch this one first. <laughs> okay, so the next thing you're gonna need um, is a pencil, a drawing pencil. You can go as simple as just a plain old number two pencil like you would use in school or a mechanical pencil or you can get yourself a set of um, drawing pencils which is what I would recommend. Uh, this is a really cheap cheap set um, from Marie's uh, that I think was like $2.50. Um, this Faber-Castile I think was a little bit more like maybe $12. This is my actually my favorite set of drawing pencils. Um, I got a nice new one just to show you for the video. <laughs> but this is my favorite set of drawing pencils and um, the one that I would recommend. I don't think they're super expensive and it's nice to have a gradated set of pencils if you're really like going to practice drawing, especially like graphite drawing. Um, and this is my favorite brand for that. Um, but if, you know, money is an issue, anything will work, a cheaper set or even just pencils like this. Okay, so I would recommend to start out with just a white vinyl eraser. You can get uh, like a package of three of these at Walmart for like $1.30. They're better than the erasers on the end of a pencil or like your standard pink eraser for school. Um, so I would start out with this. Uh, if you have a little bit more money to invest, then a nice kneaded eraser um, is really, really nice. I tend to use these two the most probably. Um, and then we have the Tombow Mono Zero. This is a really nice eraser. It comes with refills, so you can refill it. Um, and it really gets into those little tight spots to make highlights and stuff in your graphite drawings. Um, and it is very useful. And then, of course, we have the Derwent Electric Eraser, which is a lot of fun. <laughs> um, and it will power through almost anything. You can even erase, like, colored pencil to a good degree with this. So I highly recommend that. Um, and then, I forgot to men mention or bring this over. This is the Mono Tombow Mono Sanded Eraser. And this is really good for it. You can even erase ink a little bit with this. It will damage your paper a little bit. Um, but there are ways to hide that after you're done. So if you really screw up and make a mistake, this is a good eraser to have. All of these supplies will be linked down below too, so you can check it out if you want. Um, they are all affiliate links, so uh, at no extra cost to you, I get a tiny little commission from what you purchase, so it helps support the channel and is a very nice way to help support the channel at no extra cost to you. Okay, and now we are on to pencil sharpeners. So you can start with just like a cheapy, I think this was from Walmart for like 50 cents during the back to school sale, so something like this works just fine. Or you can get something a little bit <laughs> nicer with a, a little cap to hold your shavings in. Um, this one is, I think, 
was $4, and this is actually a pretty decent pencil sharpener. I use that a lot. Uh, if you're going to be using colored pencils, this is the, the ultimate colored pencil pencil sharpener that I recommend. This is the Prismacolor um, pencil sharpener, and do I have a one that needs... This doesn't need sharpening. Okay, this is not a colored pencil, but we'll pretend it is. Um, so for when you're, just a quick tip, when you're sharpening a colored pencil, always turn the sharpener, actually when you're sharpening any pencil, it's a good idea to turn the sharpener and not the pencil. You'll get a whole lot less breakage that way than if you're turning the pencil, um, especially for colored pencils. This is a must for colored pencils. Never, never, never twist the colored pencil. So see how sharp that got? No breakage of the tip. Um, this is, I think, $8 on Walmart, or it was when I bought it. I've gone through, this is my second one. They stay sharp a really long time, they last a long time, and they're definitely worth the money. Another good pencil sharpener is this Faber-Castile pencil sharpener that closes up like that. Um, it's got the graphite holes on this side and the color hole on this side, and I also find this is really, really good for sharpening pastel pencils and getting a nice fine point without breakage. This is another really nice pencil sharpener. And then, the one I use the most, my ultimate... Big Daddy <laughs> electric pencil sharpener from Afmat. I love this thing. Uh, I've been using this for almost a year now, going strong. It collects so many pencil sha shavings before you have to empty it. Uh, and it just, it, oops, I think I unplugged it. Sorry, I unplugged it when I pulled it over here to show you. Uh, it just, so fast. If you're doing a lot of colored pencil work, I would recommend an electric pencil sharpener, but um, you don't need it. It just makes the colored pencils a lot faster. Um, but again, not necessary, just a nice convenience if you want to try it. Okay, and then the last thing you have to have for um, learning to draw is blending stumps. So this is just a cheap set I got on Amazon. There's all sorts of different sizes in there. That's for blending the graphite. Like on this picture here, somebody was using a blending stump to blend the graphite to make shading and stuff. Um, and you definitely will want those if you want to try to get serious about getting better at drawing. That is the base kit, you guys. Okay, so this is, let's see if you, I mean, you don't need all of this. Like pick, you know, like I said, one from each category and get started. And this is your basic base kit. This is what you have to have to get started to get better at drawing. Uh, everything from here on out is going to be your expansion pack. <laughs> uh, so let me clear this away and I'll get out some of the other stuff to show you too. Okay, so expansion pack item number one is a fine liner. I use these all the time. Pigma Micron is my favorite so far, although I've recently been branching out and trying some other brands, um, and I will probably at some point in the future be doing some sort of review and letting you guys know which ones I like the best, if it's still Pigma Micron or if I've changed. This is one of the sets that I'm going to need to try that I haven't tried yet. I just got it. Uh, this is from Stadler, uh, which I think is supposed to be a, it's, it is supposed to be a pretty good brand, um, and I'm really excited to try these. And then, of course, these are from Ohuhu. These work great with alcohol markers. So you're going to want to check, depending on uh, what you're doing, the, the, some of the fine liners have different uses. Like some are waterproof for using with watercolor, and some are uh, alcohol marker proof for using with alcohol markers. So uh, just pay attention to whatever it is that you're doing and um, make sure you have what is appropriate for that medium. Once you get the hang of fine liners, then you're gonna wanna move on to pen and ink. This box is really old. Uh, it was from the Victorian Trading Company, it was called, um, and I got it for my 14th birthday. So a very long time ago. I do not think that they are still around, um, but I have treasured this little box ever since, and it holds my collection of fine liner, or fine liners, dip pens. Uh, this ink bottle came with it, and it's empty now, but I keep it in here because it's, it's just pretty. I like it. Um, so starting out, you can get a very basic, this is the Speedball. These are both Speedball, and you can get these at places like Walmart usually. Not with this nib. That's a calligraphy nib. Oh, well, that's not coming out. <laughs> Uh, but these are very inexpensive. You can get a set like this with a few um, nibs for probably like three, four bucks at Walmart, um, and they are a good place to start. Um, I really like this. You can see I've used this wooden one a lot. This is one of my favorites, um, and I've used it for a very, very long time. 
And then I just recently upgraded to this one. It hasn't even had time to get dirty yet, but I've been trying to be careful too. This is the Taik Taik <laughs> Um, This is I think really made for like anime artists and stuff, but I absolutely love. I adore this one. This is my favorite. Um, I actually think I did have another one that I was using after this that I lost. Um, and I replaced this one with another one because I love this one. <laughs> um, I, do, I don't think I know. I lost it somewhere. And then these are my most favorite nibs. These are the G. I think they're from Zebra. I don't know for sure. But this is the G size nibs. And you can buy a whole little pack of them for not a whole lot of money. Um, they're flexible and you can make thick and thin lines. Um, and then... This is the G2. I thought I had another one that I liked a lot, but I don't know. I guess not. I mostly use the G's for, for what I do. Um, and again, all of this will be linked down below. And then to go with that, of course, you need some ink. And this is my absolute favorite ink for dip pens, uh, black ink. This is the Dr. P.H. Martin's Bombay Black India ink. I always have several bottles of this in the house because I go through it so fast. Um, my absolute favorite dip pen ink. I have tons of ink. <laughs> I have like 30 bottles of ink. So if you ever want me to talk, do a video just talking about ink, leave a comment down below and I can uh, do that for you. Um, this ink should never ever be put in a fountain pen. Uh, the inks that go in fountain pens are not going to, well, okay. Fully waterproof inks are pigment based. Pigment based inks should not go in a fountain pen that you care about because they can and will clog your fountain pen and ruin it. Now you can get a smaller or smaller, a cheaper fountain pen that you don't care about as much. Feel free to use it in there uh, at your own discretion <laughs> because I have had pens ruined with um, ink. However, if you do a good job of immediately after use, rinsing the whole thing out, washing the whole thing out, soaking in in water, um, sometimes even some alcohol, uh, rubbing alcohol to soak it in, you can still use a fountain pen. I personally uh, prefer to just use a dip pen and ink because why take the risk, you know? Um, that being said, there are some water resistant inks like the Noodler's Golden Brown and the Noodler's Bulletproof Black, which is not actually bulletproof <laughs> and not actually waterproof either, but close. Um, I should maybe do a video about ink and fountain pens and all that and explain it at some point, but that's not today's video. And why won't this go back in now? I always do that. All right, let's see if that helps. I know that this doesn't quite fit in here. Yeah. Maybe I should, here's what we'll do. This one probably was down below, wasn't it? There we go. Okay. All right. Okay, then the next thing that you are going to need is paper. And my number one recommended choice for drawing paper is the Strathmore Bristol. Uh, this is the smooth surface. This is the vellum. The vellum has a little bit more of a tooth. Ooh, that's dirty. For like colored pencil work um, or graphite. And, and the Bristol is totally smooth. Um, for, so for like pen and ink and fine liner, this is great for that. It'll wear your nibs on your fine liners down not as fast as this. Um, they do have the 400 series, which is, the, see this says right at, on here, better. Um, they do have the 400 series, which is this one that I just got in my March art haul and have not had a chance to test yet. If you see, this says best. Um, I've used this for years and years and years and never felt like I needed to try anything else, uh, but I do want to try this now. So I'm going to try this and I'll give you guys my updated thoughts. I can tell you right now that it is very, very smooth. It very smooth. It almost feels like slippery. It's so smooth. So we'll see how that goes. It's specifically supposed to be good for pen and ink. So I do a lot of that. We will test it out and see what we think. The next thing you need is a drawing board or something to tape your drawing on. Um, and by drawing board, I mean two, two different things. So the first thing I mean is this kind of drawing board. This is the an ampersand hardboard. I think they're meant to be painted on. I like to tape um, my papers to a board like this to keep things nice and flat and not moving and then uh, draw on here. But I also mean a slanted drawing board. Um, it is much easier on your neck and helps 
uh, with proportion and scale. When you're drawing to have it slanted up, if you always draw flat like this, your drawings can get elongated um, without you even noticing until you go to put it up and then realize you have a problem. Um, so I'm gonna put in an overlay, I probably already did, of my drawing board. I got it from Blick. Um, I think it's quite a few years old now, four, four years old, five years old. It's still, in, still going strong, it's from Julian. It's adjustable so you can tilt it to different slants um, and it's got a lip to hold your board on to hold everything in place. Um, and a uh, carrying strap to carry it if you want, and I very much like mine, and I rec recommend it if you're going to be drawing for long periods of time, something to hold your work at a slant. A tabletop easel too would work as well, but I really like my drawing board. Okay, so again, this stuff is optional. This is your expansion pack. You don't need these to get started, uh, but once you start drawing, you might want to add a little color, and that is where colored pencils come in. Uh, Prismacolor is what I started with. They're a very creamy, thick, waxy colored pencil. They're absolutely glorious to use, but the problem is that they are not all light fast. In fact, I'd say out of my 120 set, probably a third of them were not light fast and I had to remove them from the set. This is what's left uh, behind afterwards that is light fast. So you can see there's not a whole lot of purples, pinks, light blues, blues at all. Um, so if you're, you know, trying to have a finished piece of work that will last a long time. Um, this might not be the set for you, but if you are just getting started out drawing and just want to practice and work in a sketchbook and aren't worried about light fastness, this is a great set that's more affordable than some of the other options that I'm going to show you now. So, uh, this is just one drawer of my polychromos, but I pulled this drawer specifically to show you the blues, the pinks, and the purples. These are the Faber-Castell polychromos colored pencils, um, and then I have a couple of the Derwent light fast pencils down here that I'm testing out. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to get more of those or not yet. Uh, they're nice too. Um, the Polychromos are an oil-based colored pencil. Uh, they are harder. They are good for fine details and I mean you can use them for everything. They're just not as waxy and soft as the Prismacolor. Um, but they're especially good for fine details because they are oil-based and have a harder point. These I would say are my favorite colored pencils and the ones I reach for the most, the Polychromos. Um, one that I am getting into now is the Caran d'Ache Luminance. The problem with the Luminance is the price. <laughs> so all of their colored pencils are light fast, all of them, um, but they are so pricey. <laughs> so the most expensive colored pencil I've ever bought. Uh, very similar to Prismacolor, very soft and waxy and beautiful to use, but very, 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 very pricey. Okay, so the next thing I did forget to mention a few things like a sanding board and a pencil extender. Those are good to have too, although not necessary. Um, the next thing that I highly, highly recommend is a white gel pen for highlights. Uh, my favorite is the the um, Uniball Signo Broad white gel pen. This is my absolute favorite. I always have like three of these in stock at my house so that if I run out, I don't have to wait. I use these a lot to go through them fast. Also, something else I forgot to mention is the Prismacolor Color Race colored pencils. Those are great for sketching with too. Um, I can't, I'm not gonna go through all of this because I'll get sidetracked. Um, I think I had a video where I walked through everything that's in here. If I did, I'll link that down below too. I'll call it the, um, the pencil organizer video, and I'll link it down below. Um, I'm pretty sure I did that already. Okay, the next thing you might want to do as you evolve and uh, get farther in your skill level is have some alcohol markers. These are from Ohuhu, these are the Copic Sketch. Um, if you've been around my channel at all, you know I've done several, I think three videos now for Ohuhu. Um, these are very budget friendly um, and basically the same as Copic Sketch. Uh, they don't blend quite as well and they don't do the pastels and the darks and the neutrals quite as well, but if you know how to use alcohol markers, you can get around that. I've done um, videos for that as well. Uh, probably you'd want to check out my best uh, tips and tricks. I can't remember the name of that video either, but I'll link that below and call it the best tips and tricks for using alcohol markers. Um, there's way to get ways to get around it. The main difference between these are that these are like 286 a marker and these are like 586 a marker. I also have recently had trouble with my caps cracking on my Copic markers, which turns out to be a known 
flaw. And I guess they're trying to fix it. Um, these are two new ones that I just got. Uh, they are not cracked as of yet, but I haven't used them yet. Um, they are pretty good about replacing them if they crack, so be aware of that. And yeah, so the whole point of these is that you can replace the nib, you can refill them, add more ink. They're supposed to last for forever so you're not throwing out the plastic all the time. Um, and that's the reason for the higher price. But right now with the cap cracking issue, I don't know what to say about it. So uh, especially if you're getting started out, I recommend the Ohuhu markers or a brand like that. Um, I really do like the Ohuhu markers a lot. They're, I mean, they're starting to get refills too. They also have their markers available to purchase singly on their website. Um, this video is not sponsored by them or anything. <laughs> um, so, you know, that was my main issue when they first came out was you couldn't refill them and you couldn't buy them singly. You can buy all of their colors singly now and um, I think they've got like 50 of the refills and I think they're working on getting more. So make your own decisions, I guess. <laughs> and then the very last thing you might want to have is a little travel pan of watercolors to take with you with your sketching supplies to add a little color if you're out sketching in like and plain air or doing some urban sketching. Um, this is just a little set from Rosa Gallery Watercolors, which is a good, good beginner set where you know they have the pigment, the pigment info and light fast rating on each pan. Um, so you can make sure you're using light, fast, quality stuff at an affordable price. So that is the base kit of essential supplies you need if you're really starting to want to learn how to draw and also the expansion, expansion pack. <laughs> uh, hopefully you found this video interesting or useful or helpful. If you did, please hit like or subscribe or leave a comment. All of those are free ways you can help support my channel with no cost to you. Uh, I also have my Patreon. Um, where we have Sketchbook Club for the base tier uh, student artist, which is the video level, and then the print and sticker club. You can go check that out. There's lots of real-time tutorials over there. Uh, that'll be linked down below too. And until next time, happy creating.